Hi, it's Sean from Electric Plum, and I want to give you guys a comprehensive overview of GoRace Mobile, our mobile web access solution for the Razor's Edge. First of all, electric, about Electric Plum, um, we were founded in 2011 by myself. I was formerly the BlackBod's uh, Chief Technology Officer for 21 years. I worked there, um, and I was also the key, uh, one of the key architects of the Razor's Edge. Uh, our company specializes in mobile web apps, mobile web app design, and, simula and simulation technology. And we're also a Microsoft partner with some of our technology integrated into their products. Today's agenda, I want to go full cycle from downloading and installing our product to accessing it from your mobile devices. I'm going to cover technical details along the way and then ultimately show you the actual product user experience on a, on a device. As far as key benefits of the product, first of all, it secure, securely lets you access Razor's Edge data from any mobile browser. So you don't have to have a native, a specific native app for a specific device. Um, it's there's no device installation. It just simply runs in the cloud and it's automatically updated. Um, then we generate a dynamic user experience based on the device you're using. So an iPhone will see it appropriately scaled, an iPad will see it appropriately scaled, and with additional functionality. Um, we also provide quick access to key constituent and query information, and then there's a list here of, of some an example of supported devices: iPhones, iPads, Google tablets, Blackberries, Windows Phone 7, etc. Uh, another key uh, scenario is desktop. Uh, we're actually seeing a lot of users using it from the desktop. It's a quick way using your Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, or Safari or Firefox browser to access Razor Edge data. So you're it's not locked into mobile, though the user experience is tuned for mobile. So let's talk about how to install the, the, the product. So the first thing you'll need to do is to go to electricplum.com and download the installation. Uh, we have a free 14-day trial, so you can try the full functionality, functionality with your product and test it with your users in the field without ever having to um, pay a dime to Electric Plum. It's a full 14-day trial. So once you, you click on the download page, and that would come and bring the product down, and you unzip that. We won't go through the whole download. You unzip it, and you get a setup program. You simply double click on the setup program, next, next, and finish. And then when you're done, you'll have an icon on your desktop. Right here, go raise mobile server. The entire process really should take you under five minutes. So let's go ahead and launch. Um, well, let's talk about the server first. The server that we're going to launch is a program that runs on only one computer in your organization. Uh, and it works with any firewall configuration and there is no web server or database server requirements. The only requirements are one, the computer has the computer you install the server to has to have Razor's Edge 7 installed on it with access to the RE7 server. And two, the computer you install on it must be able to make an outbound secure via SSL HTTPS connection to the internet. Besides that there are no other requirements. So let's go ahead and run the server. So we ran setup and now we have a short a desktop a shortcut. And we're running the server. The server is checking to see if we have the latest version of the software. If not, it would automatically update. Now, what it's telling us is welcome. This is the first time you've ever run the product. So we're going to need some basic information. So I'll say OK. Now there's a couple things you could do here. The first thing it wants is your customer ID. If you were just doing a trial, you could do this without even contacting anyone Electric Plum. You could download it and click generate trial and you could begin your 14-day trial. If you'd already purchased from us, you probably would have received an ID already. And let's, that will be the scenario we'll, we'll d demo here. That's a good scenario. <laughs> um, so enter in your customer ID. And this customer ID uniquely identifies your organization in the cloud. So let's go ahead and give us a name. And this is a one time step on the server. And now we need to log into Razor's Edge to give this. The server uses the Razor's Edge API to access RE data. So you see your standard Razor's Edge dialog. Nothing, uh, no tricks up our sleeve. So uh, you can see it says activation complete. So at this point now, uh, mobile users in the field can begin to activate their phones uh, or uh, tablets to access Razor's Edge data. That's really all there is to it, to, um, to running the server. So the next thing we want to do is actually go through the process of activating what the user would go through in the field to access the system. Um, there's a one-time process called activation. So basically that establishes that, that the user is, has a valid RE7 credentials 
and then it asks them to choose a four character access code. The reason we do this is we use the access code to authenticate them subsequently so that we do not have to ever store any race usernames or passwords either on the device or in the app in the cloud. So uh, frankly, actually technically, we, we don't store any race edge data anywhere um, on the device or, or the cloud. It stays on your server. So um, let's go through and go through the activation process. The first thing is your administrator who's running the server on a computer, one computer in your organization, opens up the server's user interface and they choose this option, get mobile app link. So this is a unique to your organization link. It's got, you can see it's got your customer ID embedded that you send, I copy it to my clipboard, that you send to your users. Typically you'd email it to the users and they would then punch it into their mobile browser. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll sort of switch hats here and we'll become the the end user. So the end user would have their phone and they would get your link and they would put it into their phone and they're brought to a screen now that's asking them to activate. Uh, this is doing this because it's, de it's detected this is the first time the user has accessed the system from the device. So they'll click activate and again this is all running in a browser. You can see this is just a typical web browser functionality. Um, so now we need, at least during the activation process, we need for one time we need to get their Razor's Edge credentials. This is just to validate that they are who they say they are. So I have a user here, uh, I think I have a Razor's Edge user named Jill who hasn't activated yet. And now uh, Jill's being asked to choose an access code. It's a unique four character access code she'll use to access the system. Okay, Jill's been activated. And now, um, subsequent, subsequently when she accesses, accesses the system, you see she just is only prompted for her username and her access code. So when she punches in her access code, she's in. And she can do things like now she can start to search for records, interact with records, etc. So we have already gone from downloading to installing the server to entering our information in the server to activate the server to having a mobile user access in the system in probably just a few minutes. It's been about six minutes of, uh, of real work. So let's go ahead and close that and move on to some details around the user licenses. Um, there's there, On the server, on the, the place, the computer that's running the GoRace mobile server, um, that do, that will require one license to be used. You'll no, you'll remember when I logged into the server, it prompted me for a user's edge uh, user's edge a razor's edge username and password. Now the good thing about that is if that that doesn't have to be running on a database server or anything, it just be running on a workstation. So um, typically your administrator would have it running on their workstation. And then uh, the good news is on that workstation he or she can still access full-blown Razor's Edge even with the server running. Um, he or she could not go to a different com computer and access Razor's Edge because using that same account because um, we respect the Razor's Edge user licensing details. Now the really good news is um, your mobile users when they're accessing the system using their, their mobile devices or tablets they do not hold or lock their account out. So you can access it from your phone and your desktop uh, concurrently. Uh, the reason it works like that is, uh, or the way it works like that is uh, this workflow here at the bottom of the slide. So a typical workflow is the user opens up their phone, hits the GoRaise mobile server link, uh, make a they make a request for data, search for a record, run a query, something like that. The server then gets that request and impersonates that user to make sure that it applies that individual person's Razor's Edge security credentials. So, for example, if that person didn't have rights to actions, they wouldn't see the button to add actions, et cetera, so that the security is uh, enforced on the device. And the server responds to the data, and it disconnects. Because, um, again, this is happening over the Internet. So it never is holding open connections to, to Razor's Edge. There's only one connection to Razor's Edge, and that's that was made by the server, who then, make, who then handles all requests from these users on, on the fly on their behalf. So hopefully that, that stuff made sense. The boring stuff is now over. So let's take a tour of the product. So I'm going to go ahead and open a phone up here and hit my site. We'll go in as Jill, the user we just activated. And you can see uh, the recently accessed record from when I searched before is there. Let's get the clutter out of the way. 
So as far as basic uh, constituent functionality, um, when you open a record, there is a summary, and that can be uh, giving history, uh, as, as well as first greatest, latest, uh, fun summaries, and more. And this, uh, the, the, the types of graph and fidelity will change based on what device you're on, tablet versus um, iPhone. Um, there's ability to communicate, uh, click to call, etc. There's biographical information here you can see. We have the address information. So everything, everything a major gift officer for sure would want to know about this person. All their prospect information, ratings, um, the entire giving history, and you can search the giving history for maybe you want to just limit it to building fund or something, or gifts that came in 2011 or 2009. Oh, none in 2009. Any in 2010? Nope. So that's pr pretty neat functionality there, and you can see this entire interface is optimized for a tablet. I mean, for, for a mobile device. Uh, Touch-friendly, I guess, is the better way to put it. Um, you can also view all their actions. You can view constituent codes. And you can view relationships. And if the relationship is a constituent, you can then quickly jump to the constituent by tapping on the relationship link. Um, pretty straightforward stuff there. You can also, for a constituent, add actions and a, a nice uh, touch friendly this would look better on a real mobile device but it's, it's a nice touch friendly way basically with six taps um, you can complete the action and including enter note including entering action notes uh, the next nice feature is query uh, let's go ahead and change to an iPad so you can see how the user experience changes so now we'll change to an iPad so you can see the system knows how to adapt its user interface depending on what device you're running on same same type of um, system, same system, just a different, um, more tailored user experience, and a little bit more relevant information when you do things like look at the um, summary graph, etc. So let's go and look at the next piece of functionality, which is query. Query lets us run um, any query in the system that is not mar that is marked as other users may run this query. And it's a really nice way to basically paint your own system, to paint your own mobile access, because any output field you put in the query will be included in the interface um, that's generated. So, for example, um, say I had a query with some volunteers in it. I could search for it. So, volunteers. And now when I run the query, you can see I've got a nice interface here with uh, that gives me a quick view of all the records in the query. And this is would be page. So if there's hundreds of thousands of records in the query, you'd get like a next 50, next, to, next 50, next 50, previous 50, etc. So you wouldn't have to be scrolling through 100,000 records on one screen. And then each screen, each um, navigation piece here shows the output fields from the query. So you can see what you could do is if you had if you had specific um, a specific user experience you wanted to tailor to some of your mobile users, you could simply build queries that had all the output fields that were pertinent to them, and then they would get their own unique um, query experience, which is pr uh, pretty powerful. So let's go ahead and maybe let's go find another one. See if we have some uh, we have here. Of course, I only have um, sample database, but so laps members that might be a good one so yeah here's a, here's a good one with laps members we had different output fields current category and program subcategory when they lapse etc so uh, and then of course the, the queries themselves uh, allow you to then drill to the record so I can just simply tap on the record and it will open up that record in constituent view and this person has even more um, data than the first person I showed you they've got things like notes um, prospect information I think the other, the other um, folks had uh, number of relationships organizational and, and you can see we show organizational education solicitor relationships all relationships are, are shown and just to make sure we hit it all here we'll open up the canonical record Mr. Hernandez and this will actually let me allow me to point out the way that the product is optimized for mobile access um, you load Hernandez has a massive record with pretty much everything filled in 23 actions 75 gifts 19 pieces of prospect information so he's a huge record but there's a pretty um, sophisticated caching mechanism that, that happens on in your server so that when mobile users are accessing um, it keeps it uh, much quicker 
uh, for, for example, I had already opened Mr. Hernandez. The next time Mr. Hernandez is accessed from this from this device, you'll, you'll notice it's much quicker. And if we look back on the server, for the geeks in the room that care, you'll note that, the, by the way, the server is um, logging every request as it comes in, you can see. And you can see here at the bottom, request serve from cache. So Jill made a request to get the constituent profile, and that was served from the cache. Um, this level of detail, uh, typically this thing is going to be minimized and out of the way and min on the tray, but it is nice to have this detail when you want to do things like um, see which users are accessing the system and what they're doing. So we can see Jill has made 22 requests. Her last one was on August 24th, and in this case from the local machine. You, typically we'd show the IP address. And so this becomes also a nice place where on the server you could quickly, say if Jill lost her phone, um, you could immediately just take Jill... Well, first of all, the person that found her phone would have to know her access code, but say, for example, they did. Um, you could still um, delete their, the mobile user from here, and they wouldn't be able to access from remotely. Uh, obviously, of course, if, when Razor Edge users are deleted from within RE, they, they no longer are active um, via GoRaise Mobile either. So GoRaise Mobile fully respects the Razor's Edge credentials and uh, user additions and deletions. I think that's enough for now. Um, hopefully that all makes sense now about how it, uh, how it all works. And um, I guess the last thing I should talk about is pricing. Uh, basic pricing is for the standard model, which is for each user, it's $239 a year per user. So that works out to like $19.99 a month. So for each user. Now, if you have more than, say, 10 or 15 users you're going to want to have access, then you'd probably choose the unlimited plan. And that's $2,999 a year. And that's for unlimited mobile users. And support and maintenance is included with all this, so there's no additional fees. Um, if you're interested, please contact sales at electricplum.com. And thank you very much.